good morning namaskaram sugamano and a warm greetings to you to everyone who's watching us live and to everyone who's connected from various parts of the world on behalf of team dentist channel dot online my name is ruben lobo and i warmly welcome you to the opening session of the world's first virtual dental implant expo and what a good way to start with one of the best speakers from india yes ladies and gentlemen most of you all know him and most of you all also know him as the zygoma guy the go to zygoma guy in india yes i am talking about our very own professor dr johnson james it's my privilege to introduce our speaker fortunately due to a time constraint i wouldn't be able to introduce him on a full scale or a full note however i'd like to give a gist about our dear speaker dr johnson james dr johnson james is an implant surgeon professor and an international certified mentor with 15 years of experience in advanced implantology piezo surgery and peri implant regeneration with a post graduate degree in periodontology from ragas dental college and hospital he is a practicing both certified implant surgeon and active fellow of the international Co congress of oral implantologists a key opinion leader at norris medical a director of leading chain of dental hospitals in south india and professor consultant and key speaker in the field of advanced dentistry he has concentrated his interest in periodontology and advanced implantology since the year 2006 and has spent 13 prominent years in clinical research and development on peri implant regeneration with full autologous growth factors with bone substitutes particularly in full mouth rehabilitation ladies and gentlemen presenting to you dr johnson james live thank you uh, and uh, it's uh, really a honor for me to do the opening lecture for such an amazing program a uh, internationally uh, recognized program and the probably the first virtual dental implant symposium and when ruben asked me to do the opening program uh, it immediately though we are used to doing webinars in this lockdown period it immediately put a big uh, uh, pressure on my head so i thought i should give out the best and um, so uh, and he has put tag me on facebook as being the opening batsman for these lectures and when i went through what an opening batsman should do okay one sec yeah so my lecture uh, is today is basically going to be an inspirational lecture to all the budding doctors and those who are well into implants now because oh, this is an implant symposium i'm sure those who are interested in implants are joined us today and uh, uh, i'm going to share you uh, i'm not going to teach you how to zygom or how to zygoids i'm going to tell you how i adapted to this beautiful procedures and how it has changed the way i practice right now and what all leverage it has given to me among my peers in, in implant dentistry okay so we are here to start the the beautiful uh, symposia with a bang okay and i have to cater to my wide variety of audience i'm sure there are people from all over the world watching this program and we have beginners to uh, the ex experienced uh, doctors uh, have for joined this program and when i went to wikipedia it told me the the opening batsman should be an aggressive batsman and i love i really love the word aggressive because only when you have an aggressive attitude i'm sure you can adapt to zygomatic implants and pterygoid implants in fact this is one of my opening slides of a uh, a lecture i did for the indian society of periodontology and now it has become my tagline the aggressive periodontist now all all my lectures for the perio community i start with this uh, slide only okay and this lecture is even more special because uh, of all the webinars i have done uh, this webinar i am doing sitting in my office uh, in rajas dental college where i have spent the last 13 years as an academician as a clinician teaching undergraduates post grads and now uh, we are also into uh, phd programs so uh, thank you ruben for this wonderful uh, and the entire team of dentist online for this wonderful opportunity so i already had my uh, introduction and usually we start our lectures with objectives i tell the clinical pictures and what are going to see but this lecture is going to be very special because i'm going to tell you how simple it is what are simple protocols we adapted and uh, how you also can be an advanced implantologist 
doing zygomatic implants in your chair. Okay. And this journey in the implantology has been for the past 10 years. And uh, I should thank uh, the people in Norris Medical also. They have been always been behind me, training me, pushing me, and uh, uh, helping me with my cases and uh, amazing team there too. So this journey did not stop, start with dentistry, did not start with my PhD post-graduation. It started way back where my dad, this is my dad, I, I owe a lot to him. Uh, whatever you do, whatever procedures you do, whatever profession you are in, you should become, you should keep traveling till you become unique in the specialty. You don't stop somewhere saying, okay, I'm done. This is enough for me. So when I, after my periodontal uh, uh, training, uh, when I went on to get trained in implants, I realized that there are very, very few doctors around the world uh, getting trained in zygomatic implants. And those who go for training also rarely do it in their office. So I decided that, okay, this is where I should, I should keep my focus on. And that is what has made me, what has brought me to this uh, platform here, talking to you. Now, uh, it's a tough job, but once you keep doing the tough job on a regular basis, you get used to it. This is a, a nice um, uh, creative by Norris Medical, which shows zygomatic implants help you to uh, somehow manage a case but I feel this person hanging here is, is me, is, is all the, not only me, it relates to all implant consultants. Sometimes you are called to uh, uh, do a case or you might be called to go for a case where there is absolutely no bone or the patient is highly systemically compromised and a lot of complications coming up. And in spite of that, they, they feel you are, you are an amazing person and then no, no case that you can't handle. And that is exactly why you should have these advanced implants in your armamentarium right from the skills to do it and for the methodology to do it. And that is why we are here. Okay. So uh, when Brandmark uh, discovered, this is something I put down. It's a small word. Brandmark dis 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 discovered by Austrian integration. More than Austrian integration, he's the one who got out zygomatic implants. And I feel that discovery, that invention has become a big giant leap for implantology because now we can say, uh, implantology anywhere. There is no case that you can't manage the implants. That is that is my USP right now. Uh, I whatever patient walks into my clinic, I, I I they might have gone to ten clinics where they say implants can't be done for you. There is no bone. You have to go for regeneration. Wait for six months and come back. But that is not the case with my side because I tell them you can go for implants and you can finish off in maybe in a week's time. I can give you teeth also. So that has really helped my kind of practice a lot. So it all started in uh, 2015, where the, this is me, uh, a, a poor looking fellow over here. Uh, yeah, that's me, all right, okay, that's me. So we had this uh, wonderful uh, seminar in Goa, Ormiz in Oris Medical. We had a lot of Russians also for comfort training program, and this is Raghav and Nitin was there. And this is uh, one of the pioneers of uh, Zygmatic Implant, Dr. Dov Krishnoshki. And uh, we got oriented to uh, all the methods and techniques of doing the extra maxillary procedure. And I'm sure uh, those of you who have been exposed to zygomatic implants would have heard about hospitalization and, and uh, GA procedures where these beautiful team of doctors, this is, this is Rami, uh, taught me about, taught us the entire team over there about how to do the extra maxillary technique of zygomatic implants, chair side and lacunacetia. So once the training was done, it was a three day program, Training was done on like, like all uh, budding implantologists. The moment you'd go for a basic program or advanced program, you'd go back, sit in your office, waiting for the right patient to turn up. So even now, uh, people who hear zygomatic implants will say, those kind of cases we'll do once in six months, once in three. Why, why, why it takes so much difficulty learning it? But that is not the case. Now, this patient with such minimal bone walked into my clinic within four days time of doing my program. And a simple reason being chronic periodontal disease. See, it is not that zygomatic implants you do only for onco cases, trauma cases, maxillectomy cases. There are a lot of cases which will walk into a clinic with highly atrophic maxilla due to periodontal disease with some systemic complications. So these are the indications for zygomatic implants are enormous. The amount of cases you can manage very easily with zygomatic implants, immediate loading are enormous which will walk into your practice. And this was that case, my first case of zygomatic implants. We did it in 2015, uh, three days after I went, we came back from the program. And it's a five year follow up. The patient's doing extremely well. Yeah, we, we did two zygomatic implants and three nasal implants. And this is the, that patient. 
okay my early days we did it took with my photos it took with my camera yeah and it felt good that uh, we have achieved something in my specialty so this was a pre op upper full uh, periodontal disease after extraction and uh, yeah and this is the ceramic process we gave to him and a good smile a total change in the the appearance smile ripplenness everything after the and of course we never uh, forget our first we don't forget our first love first kiss and uh, how many years down the my uh, my training i my my career, career as implantologist those this case is always very special to me so why should you learn about zygomatic and target always when you when you do something you ask what is your why okay why don't do not just do blindly because now i'm telling you dr johnson has told me okay i learned no what is what is in it for you why do you think uh, do you need to learn about zygomatic implants very often you will be stumped with such cases you don't know how often very often you do some full mouth cases or segmental cases uh, which you can easily rehabilitate with zygomatic and pterygoid implants and the best part of it is it is an evidence based solution it is uh, ideal prosthetic options and it can use for both innate loading and delayed loading and the amazing part is zygomatic implants work well with the immediate loading protocol there are a lot of studies behind it and time is something that is not there in everyone's hands now and time is what we are selling to the patients with these immediate loading protocols i will not be talking about the immediate loading protocols yeah and why pterygoid implants see pterygoid implants most people think of pterygoid implants as an option to convert an all on 4 into an all on 6 and when there is heavy occlusion all this stuff but i will show you a couple of cases where pterygoid implants are a wonderful option for segmental rehabilitation without going for sinus lifts or complicated uh, grafting okay and they also have uh, a lot of studies behind them right from when uh, tulasne uh, discovered them way back in 1970s lot of side because all these are cortical implantology cases where they engage good cortical bone and uh, so it it really works well these kind of cases so when you have an atrophic maxilla when you have an atrophic maxilla one second let's keep the chat open so i know something is happening yeah so when you have a highly atrophic maxilla three options you will have to keep with you always one this is an implant Yeah. This is your nasal implant. This is zygomatic implant and your pterygoid implant. And this exact can manage any kind of cases that pops into you. You are an opener. Any kind of googly, any kind of pass ball that comes raising to you can hit for a six. Okay. So that that is what you should know. So that is why uh, I would like to emphasize that all of you who are into full mouth rehabs, who are consultants, please get on to get trained in these kind of care uh, treatment options. Okay. When it comes to techniques of uh, of zygomatic implants we have the classic brainamer protocol uh, was how we started doing uh, these cases but the, there are certain disadvantages to these uh, because it has a huge uh, uh, damaging effort uh, effect on the sinus membranes all right and the bac was little less there are a lot of cases of sinus cells reporting and the prosthetic platform was almost little palatal so being a big disturbance for the patients yeah that is when we got other techniques the sinus slot technique and now what we use is the extraized or the extra maxillary approach i all almost all maybe 70 to 80% of the zygomatic cases i finish my implant perforation of the sinus so okay and it is less invasive the surgery time is reduced and this is precisely the reason why we can do it under local also and the uh, The, the head you can see the head over here is precisely at the crest so how comfortable it can be for the patient and for the prosthodontist to go out for rehabilitation and though it requires a little bit of surgical training it is not so demanding as your uh, uh, transsinus techniques okay the extra maxillary something that you can learn and we have a beautiful set of armamentarium which will make it work like clockwork so a little bit about the case selection part when do you need uh, zygomatic and pterygoid implants all right so this slide will uh, a very uh, self explanatory i have modified uh, it uh, according to the bedrosian classification the first diagram you know is the bedrosian classification where depending on the bone available for zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 so now we if we have bone in zone 1 2 and 3 we'll be doing the conventional 6 to 8 implants yeah 
but if there is no bone in zone 3 and we have bone only in zone 1 and zone 2 is where we go for the all on 4 all in 4 techniques this all in 4 is now especially when there is an opposing dentition like these kind of cases it's better to add up with thyroid implants because it prevents the uh, the leverage forces on the distal implant this implant is the one which is most likely to be a lot of forces so this thyroid implant will prevent the leverage forces on the distal implant and now when there is no bone in zone 2 also only there is bone in zone 1 is when we go for the zygomatic implant this is the indication for zygomatic implants and when you have no bone in zone 1 2 and 3 is we'll see in the next slide where we go for the quad zygoma so when there is no bone in zone 1 2 and 3 is when we go for the these are the uh, three kinds of uh, all on four configurations okay conventional implants with zygomatic implants and the quad zygoma it basically depends on the amount of bone available uh, is how we decide on so i'm sure you'll be getting a lot of cases like these also which you have told the patient we can't go we can just go for complete dentures and there are some kind of syndrome patients you know like uh like this patient they come at a young age maybe 30 40 also with bone like this so those kind of cases you can't tell them to get dentures forever and that is exactly when we have to use zygomatic implants okay so we're done with that so when i got to doing my uh, implant cases uh, in the early days which we used mostly free hand and uh, and it, we need some kind of uh, technical uh, there are difficulties in do, doing it and what happened uh, over the years is i thought now there is no point my me myself doing such cases and i think we should develop protocols so that we can take it out to the doctors outside a lot of dentists who feel if, if you remember when first implants came into uh, practice it was done only by the privileged few the very rich doctors and rich patients and now everyone is doing implants so there will come a time uh, it's a vision when we formed the uh, tilt i dr nitin Avijay and dr venkat uh, we formed the team and we decided that we should go on to train all the dentists who are willing on who to go on to take their implant practice the next level in these advanced protocols and when we do that, we can't just tell them, do do this, do that. We have developed proper protocols. And that is when uh, I sat together and we developed the minimally invasive guided protocols for zygomatic implants. Now, I, most of my uh, clinic's time is involved in doing case discussion with doctors from India and around the world about planning their cases. And I have a beautiful backend team with uh, with CETAS, uh, headed by Dr. John Nason, a uh, uh, good friend of mine. Who we work on planning cases and giving, pro, helping them with armamentarium, providing implants, and uh, that's how we work now. Because the key word to success and placement of zygomatic implant is a trajectory. When you can plan the trajectory properly, when you know where to start, where to end, uh, it works very well. I'll show you some series of four or five slides where you, you can see how simple it is to plan a zygomatic implant. So we all know uh, the Raga approach, Dr. Apar Shetal. I was fortunate enough to have a brief uh, discussion with him uh, about two weeks back about uh, some things that are going to ha happen. Yeah. So uh, you can see over here the start point and the end point. This is point A and point C. It will be the same. What changes? That this is the trajectory. So what changes is the resorption pattern of the maxilla. So as it resorbs and goes more posteriorly, it becomes a Zaga 4. Zaga 4 is hardly touches the sinus. It's entirely the extra maxillary uh, placement of implants. Whereas Zaga 0 will be a trans sinus. But here in this case, also trajectory is the same, where we do we, we might encounter sinus and we just push the sinus a little off and so that sinus is not injured. So once you know the trajectory and the, the correct uh, uh, placement technique, Okay, we can we have let us certain uh, brief protocols. Now the 5.5 protocol is something we use for placing a single implant. You can see over here now if, if this is the 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 entire width of the zygomatic bone. So precisely half of it. Five stands for the premolar region. Okay, so it's a second premolar region, and the point you decide where you enter the zygomatic bone, but 5.5, right? So when we plan this A and B, okay, C is automatic. See the point C is automatic where the implant comes out of the zygomatic bone. That point is automatic. Yeah, and So this is what we do right now. So now we we have now guided protocols where you can plan point A and point B and create stents for this. And now anyone can go ahead doing zygomatic implants in a snap. This is for the quad zygoma. And when quad zygoma, we have the most ideal locations as by studies by Hong et al. at this A3 and B1. Okay, these are quad zygoma uh, location points. 
Okay, so this point A, B, C. Now this is a quadrigon planning we have done. When we have planning for this point A, B, and C, everything becomes natural. I'll show you briefly about the armamentarium. It's a mixture of uh, using the right armamentarium and proper planning. Okay, so these are the zygomatic implants from Norris Medical. Okay, and uh, their generation two. Uh, we are uh, we are the most advanced in this concept uh, compared to other companies because we are doing a lot of research going on in zygomatic implants and we come out with new kits and new designs. Okay, so all the implants are 4.2 diameter. They're very sturdy implants, and these are the lengths available. And then we have to create. Uh, we have a set of three drills for uh, creating guide parts to enter into the zygomatic bone, and then a sequential drilling uh, by using step drills. Uh, three drills again, uh, which, will, which will drill through the zygomatic bone and refer it outside to give the four point cortical contact. Then we have depth gauge to measure the right correct uh, length of zygomatic implant. And we have this entire range of multi units, straight from uh, straight 17, uh, 30, 45, 252 to 60. For quartz zygomas, we need 52 and 60. But records also we may need 45 and 52. So to rehabilitate and give you a very passive process to the patient. These are two other things you'll have to need. You'll need for sure for doing a full mouth rehab. You're a surgical screwdriver. You cannot place a zygomatic implant with a regular talk ratchet. You'll need a surgical screwdriver. And another very useful instrument for those who are doing a full mouth uh, a talk uh, handpiece. So it's called a talk handpiece. Uh, especially to reach the posterior part of your pterygoid area regions and helps you to put in all those minor screws, healing caps, multi uh, removal and insertion, put in your uh, processes, very useful instrument. So this is the prosthetic lineup. Okay, we have the temporaries, we have the snap-on transfers, multi-unit transfers, multi-units. And this is a very useful uh, set of uh, instruments, which uh, is the angulation guide, which will help us to identify what kind of multi-units we are use, going to use. This comes at both the implant level and the uh, 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 osteotomy level to determine what, what is the level of angulation you have to take. Now, when you see this video, you can see here why we have to adapt to the extra maxillary technique with the MIC protocols. You can see here the implant is placed in the sinus intact. This case was done in a span of 28 minutes. Yeah. So, such kind of minimally invasive chair side procedure is possible only with the extra maxillary techniques. It's minimally invasive, absolutely not much of complications, especially except when you go to perfect sinus, go for sinus design and stuff. And very minimal surgical stash time. Uh, stash. So, this helps us to finish the procedure under local anesthesia itself. Yeah. So that is the main advantage of these procedures. So when you go for consultation also, you have you have a design kit also with you. You're going to be raising the flap. You see that at some point you feel the implant is, the bone is insufficient. Immediately take your zygomatic implant, place one over there. You don't have to go for extensive planning to do this. Okay, good. So I'll tell you a little about, so as I told you, uh, when you started off with the implants, we did a lot of pre-hand surgeries, and then we thought we have to teach the masters, we have to teach everyone uh, to do it. And that is when we developed these guided protocols, the MIG, the minimally invasive guided protocols, which I will be properly co probably covering in my next lecture on Sunday. Yeah. So these are the guided zygoma surgeries. So when you go for guided zygoma, we have the complete guided zygoma, the E zygoma, which is uh, which is done from our office office ministry. And uh, we also have the navigator surgical procedures. What I uh, do for uh, uh, the doctors who are training in zygomatic implants or the uh, the partially guided, this is the positional guide. We have the positional guide and this is the partially guided surgical guide. Point B and point A, what should be the depth of drilling that is necessary. And when these two points are connected, automatically we'll have point C. That's the idea. Same for here. These are bone bone pins which will anchor the. This is held by the hand. This is held by the hand. But this is anchored by bone pins where you can go for your tegan implants, your zygomatic implants. Uh, we're partially guided. Okay. So this is how it looks like. So I'll take you through uh, the lack of time. Uh, I'll take you through uh, the photos. Uh, this is one of the first case we did. This is in, uh, my demonstration for the postgraduates and the uh, staff and I, with my mentor, Dr. K. V. Arun. Uh, the first case we did guided, yeah. So these are the guides, and again John was there with me. I did this procedure. These are the guide guide paths we do to enter the zygomatic bone. Then the drilling protocol. You can see here it has to perforate apically, sequential drilling, and then we do the depth gauge to measure the length of the implant. And this is the case we did. All right. So these are external markings to orient ourselves to the angulation of the implant. 
and the stent. Now stent here, so this will tell me how much the depth, this, the, the depth I have to drill. So I know the trajectory I have to follow and it shoots into the diametric bone and comes out to the side. So this is a drilling, sequential drilling, and this is uh, the beautiful implant, the, the, the bar show of implants, the diametric implants. Yeah. So here we have entirely smooth scholar, so there's no plaque accumulation or anything. Even this implant is exposed by a soft, it doesn't matter. Whereas here we have 13 millimeter of rough surface. This is the implant which anchors, engages the cortical bone of the zygomatic, cortical bone of the zygoma. Okay. So that's the implant placed, and that's how we place the implant and the multi unit, which gives us a, a good parallelism. The right side, again, the stent, the drilling protocols. Yeah. And usually the 45 degree angulation is what we use for zygomatic implants. And the two implants placed. This again was done chest side under local anesthesia and two implants anteriorly. If you need, you can go for grafting sticky bone, which is not the scope of this lecture. And the cord zygoma, again, so we have now two drills, two, two, uh, two uh, guide paths for the quad, quad. Again, this is planning we do. See, this is the planning done. You can see the position, the parallelism of the implants. So this is how we do the planning. You can do it over team viewer or can send it the, can, I usually some, sometimes go and sit with them or I do it or some, some doctors who send it to me from uh, Iran or from Mumbai. So we do a team viewer discussion about the position of implants. So they also know the, uh, the, uh, uh, orientation of the skull, the thickness of bone. So everything is known prior to the surgery. So the actual surgical chat time is reduced by half. Or normally, if you do this by three to four hours, you would finish a quartz like a case in maximum uh, one hour, one hour, 25 minutes. Yeah. So this is how we do the uh, planning and the digital guides prepared. Okay. So with that, I'll show you one case we have done with guides. This is the flap raised and the initial pilot drill. And the uh, first we started the course drill. You can see here the sign is still intact. Okay. And yes, so two, two drills we have prepared for the uh, quad. Then the gauging orientation. Okay. And that's the implant. We placed a 4.2 into 47.5 with very good primary stability. Of course, for doing immediate loading, you would need a primary stability of greater than 40 newtons per second. Limit Q. Okay, the right side, you can see the drill orientations, which almost conforms to the planning you have done prior. So two implants place. That's a quad. Yeah. I think we'll take all cases at the end. All the, all doubts we'll take at the end. Yeah. So this is the uh, basically the case. A little bit of grafting again. It up, up, up to you. Uh, since I am a periodontist, I love grafting and membranes. Okay. Ski bone membranes. That's the implants in position. Yeah, and the processes, and you can see over here, uh, good ideal placement. This is a CT, CT two implant, two, two implants entirely within the zygomatic bone. Good, and this case I show in all my presentations because we have, we have we are very special to me. A guard case I did in Rajkot because the patient had already lost one eye due to uh, uh, some other reasons, and now you can imagine the stress on my on me because the the patient has gone through literature and found that the biggest complication of uh, a zygomatic implant can be if it goes into the eye. So he's already left without an eye. He does so if something goes wrong, you know, <laughs> I'll be in a soup. So uh, I didn't know this case before I traveled to Rajkot. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, just showing you the minimum armamentarium. Not showing you the procedures. Okay, multi orus implants, multi units, and uh, the zygomatic implant place. And this is the immediate post op picture. You can see not much of edema, not much of discomfort to the patient. Yeah, and uh, so it shows you the ease of doing the uh, zygomatic implants, this chair side procedure. So the, I told you as I travel around India for the for exclusively for these kind of cases, and it gets such nice memories with doctors and patients alike. And they have invented me there from Port Bandar, where Gandhiji was born. They have invented, invented me to their place also. So to finally, uh, to prove uh, my point of uh, the ease of uh, doing zygomatic implants, but why you need proper training, of course. But then, how it has changed the way to do my zygomatic implants is this picture. This is uh, the a live uh, surgical procedure we did for our uh, uh, till team of first <clears throat> our batch of maybe 30 students from around. India and the world. Okay. And this is my first uh, demonstration of the quad. So this side was done by Dr. Nitin and this is by myself where uh, we did a live surgery for uh, 
the doctors yeah, and i know and you must know how uh, difficult it is to do a, a live surgery rather than doing it in the comfort of your chair side and this is the second day post of fever right the second day post of patient very comfortable not much of uh, edema and uh, it went down to his bombay bridge for the patient so uh, it shows a little bit about pterygoids i'm not going to go into details of pterygoids why you need pterygoids in your practice okay so to convert an all on 4 into all on 6 it will give a very good ap spread and a long term success for your all on 4s is of course be improved studies show uh, we can give more masticator units you don't have to limit to 6 to 6 you can go 7 to 7 and patient has Uh, there are cases where they will all on four people feel that one tooth is short. After one more tooth, I will be happy with. So in those kind of cases, all on six is excellent. So it's, this is my first case of pterygoids where I did for a temple pujari. Okay, typical textbook how it looks like. But what I want you to uh, see is this segmental rehabilitation. You can see you get a lot of cases where patients lose their posteriors, come only with their canine to canine, and then uh, they ask for rehabilitation of the posteriors. these kind of cases can be managed with tilted implants okay so ideally when you place a pterygoid we we might be encountering the tuberosity okay then the pyramidal process and the pterygoid process these are three kind bones you'll be going through and based on this i have uh, over, uh, compared with some previous classifications what are the five levels of placement of the pterygoid where is the pterygoid implant going to be so first will be when it is entirely within the tuberosity it's called the tuberosity implant Okay, this this is what I'm talking about. This implant. Second, when it engages the pterygoid, the, the pterygoid plate also a little bit. Okay, that will be called the pterygoid maxillary implant. Okay, then when it engages the palatine process, it's called the tubero palatine implant. And when it engages all three, the 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 uh, the tuberosity, the palatine bone, and pterygoid plate, it's called a tubero pterygoid implant. And finally, when it perforates the outer cortical plate, this is the ideal location of the pterygoid implant you would call it a tubero pterygoid palatine implant okay so this is what we should be aiming at but at the same time do not tilt it too much so that we have angulation more than 42 it's ideally placed at this angulation okay angulation of 30 to 45 is an ideal angulation for the pterygoids so there is not much a leverage process on the implant okay so placing a pterygoid again you have to follow a buccal palatal axis and the anterior posterior axis so i don't think we are 10 30 we are 15 more minutes okay so we follow a, a buccal palatal axis and a anterior posterior axis so this is the buccal palatal axis okay okay so buccal palatal axis then the anterior posterior axis okay so based on that based on that uh, is how we orient our pterygoid implant okay so i i tell uh, there is no clear cut Okay, the drill in this angulation will go. Away. It is just matter because every patient is different. Because your pterygoid plates is follows the resorption pattern of your maxilla. So you can see over here different. So if it's at point A, your pterygoid plate is over here. Now here, this is a pterygoid plate B. So you have to follow the curve of the of the uh, posterior maxilla, the maxillary tuberosity, and then you drill accordingly. Now this is the place you drill accordingly. You drill here. You drill D. You drill here. So your drilling angulation also will change according to the resorption pattern. and the length of implant also will change according to the resorption pattern of the axilla and this is my tag line we follow the curve okay not all curves are the same so as i told you this is the curve of the maxilla and this is the pterygoid plate so you have to follow drill following the curve of the axilla yeah okay good so my formula you follow the curve so a buccal palatal angulation of 25 to 45 degrees all right and a uh, anterior posterior angulation of 45 to 60 degrees this is 45 this is 60 to 70 this is a uh, more ideal uh, angulation i told you but sometimes when you uh, the bone is ideally resorbed you might go for a more angulation so you follow the curve and that's that's how we place our pterygoids this is something again which we uh, something we have learned i i have learned over the years doing cases taking cbcts analyzing the positions and what how why some implants fail some succeed so again this case we have almost a four point cortical contact we have the crest and we have the uh, going through the cortical plates of the uh, palatine bone the pterygoid plate so uh, ideal four point cortical contact is very important when you place a pterygoid implants also and now coming to the armamentarium we have the uh, norris uh, osteotomes for placing and the drills also i use a combination of both osteotomes and drills 
okay sometimes a uh, 2.3 and 2.8 is enough for placing even a 4.2 mm uh, 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 thyroid implant and what i like about uh, this i already told you the angulated guide pins which you use to see if your angulation is right and the the normal implant dimensions uh, you would need is probably 18 mm is what most cases you will need sometimes they are highly resolved when you go for 13 mm and below and this is your average length available okay so that thyroid plate so uh, that and this is exactly what we have in ours also we have a length for thyroid from 4.2 into 18 to 4.2 to 22 this is the length of thyroid implants available okay and among the tericore and that uh, and norris is one of the few companies which has an exclusive uh, uh, thyroid implant to its uh, armamentarium and this is a beautiful implant which i like the terifit implant which has a 5 mm soft tissue collar so little exposed uh, when you place a posterior implant the crest doesn't matter and it helps a lot during a prosthetic phase also i use this implant even for extraction placement in the upper anterior it's a beautiful implant uh, we need that to use it you see so i'm going to show you uh, one or two cases where we have done a segmental rehab with thyroids this is not that you need thyroids only for full mouth rehabs you can see over here typical where a bone loss only in the posteriors or anteriors are very good yeah so uh, these are the pictures this here time i have yeah i may have 10 more minutes okay so uh, these are the drilling protocols this is my depth toy this is my uh, 2 mm drill and that is the terifit terifit implant yeah it's a 4.2 in 18 we have placed you always keep one instrument inside and take out so that your angulation doesn't change because these are very highly aggressive implants and the bone is very soft so you have to form the you have to follow the exact angulation as the implant is going and coming out good so that's the implant base the surgical screw driver we need for placing the implant and you can see the amount of stability which we can achieve by using uh, thyroid implants when it engages the thyroid plate so anteriorly uh, uh, two more implants yeah and some kind of grafting anterior was a tough implant and and this case a little special because uh, one side we did the tilted implants the first quadrant second quadrant we went for little uh, perpendicular implants uh, because there is bone in the tibialis region we didn't go for angulation so a little bit of osteoinsufficiency using densabers yeah the thyroid implant placed with good primary stability again so here we had multi units and here we had conventional implants so the transfer is done this is for the first quadrant the second quadrant and you can see the difference here we are we are attached multi units but here we have not attached multi units uh, again i want to uh, show to the yeah um so transfers open so we always check x rays to see the the fit of the transfers splinted okay this is the impression and the uh, final processes the processes in position so segmental rehab and the deloading was done uh, uh i think after one and a half months after one month yeah you can do this immediately also but then uh, the soft tissue healing might shrink and cause some kind of impaction one month is a one and a half months is a good time to load your uh, cortical implants thyroid is like a matter that okay so this is you can see these two are thyroid implants you can see the angulation more perfect over here this is a tubular osteo implant and this is a tubular thyroid implant so this is how it looks on the uh, cbct the opg view yeah and uh, okay see this 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 is x ray you can see here you can see this implant perforated thyroid plate and this implant confined within the tuberosity maybe this video will make it clear for you what i uh, i'm trying to tell you you can see uh, one second sorry yeah so i have time you can see this implant this is the thyroid implant you can see here it is perforating the thyroid plate the exact location yes you can see that and yeah yeah you can see here the precise spread by the thyroid plate the nasal implant the like nasal flow okay and this is the tuberosity implant which is entirely within the confines of the tuberosity and this is the uh, uh, same case where we have a three dimensional view of the thyroid implant 
which I just want to see the, I uh, can see here precisely the pressure on the pterygoid implant. Can you see that? So engaging pterygoid plate and these implants will never fail. They'll say that forever. Provide you good, uh, give a good processes for the patient and not much of any leverage process to pterygoid implant also. See all the, all the implant cases, I, uh, more than placing implant, the occlusion and process matters. So please, please keep that in mind. This is a, tab this is a tabular implant. You can see it's entirely confined within the uh, tuberosity region. Good. Okay, so another case. Now we I told you not just learning to do surgery in point. We also have developed guided protocols. So this is a segmental case again. And uh, why this case is important for me is because I have used the entire armamentarium of implants I have uh, available with me. This is the planning we did. Okay, I don't think we have time to see the planning. Yeah. Okay, so three implants. And this is the guide. We call it the uh, the Norris guides. The, the red guides we use. Yeah, tooth supported guides. Okay, so uh, drills. So when I drill the pterygoid, if you see, I can see bone like this. I know I'm going into bone. I'm not going to tissue or something. So I always look at the drill when I take it out. Even zygomatic implants also, I take out and see if there is tissue or a fat or, an, or bone into it. Yeah, so these are two mm drills, long drills. So here I've used uh, four types of implants in this uh, case, all Norris. So this is an extraction socket. So I used a cortical implant of four into 16 in the anterior. This is the canine region. Then uh, below the sinus, I used a tough 3.75-13 flapless. And then at the terrific implant, it's a 4.2 into 20 for the post. You can see the nice taper we have over here for engaging the pterygoid plate and the soft tissue collar also. Yeah. So that's the pterygoid implant placed. This is my 45 degree angulation to check what kind of unit I'm going to use. Three implants positioned over there. You can see how I'm correcting the tilt. Okay, so that is the, and uh, what happened for this patient was there was this region over here where the patient wanted to implant over there. And that we did a, for narrow spaces, for laterals, for lower anterals, we have uh, the mono implant. There is a lecture on mono by Dr. Darshan. Uh, it's a nice implant which is used for to some time to finish cases fast. Yeah, there's the mono, it's, it's bendable implant. And uh, uh, now it's giving me craze now with a lot of doctors uh, who are used to using the mono implants. Yeah, so they're not a single piece implants. Okay, so as you have seen, you have seen some uh, uh, nice cases. Uh, I hopefully that they, they are that are inspiring for you, and you also notice how we can manage such kind of cases using zygomatic and pterygoid. So uh, with a lot of this training I've got and these protocols we have created, how are you going to start uh, these these um, uh, procedures in your clinic? So first, you have to develop an aggressive attitude, then develop a passion for learning, and then learn from the right people. And then you can also start taking these baby steps because see these these things are not taught to me in college and that's exactly what my guide Dr. Arun sir told me that when I went back to my institution to teach the PGs over there, uh, happy and proud that Johnson came back to teach something he did not learn from here. So learning is a complete actually it's, it's a continuous process. You do your D D D D S, you do your M D S, P H D, but you keep learning. We are updating yourself with the latest in. Uh, not, otherwise, you'll be left out, and there are there are going to people going to uh, ride past you. So uh, 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 this is uh, my uh, setup. Thank you for the uh, amazing 40 minutes you have given me. I think I'm on time. I still have three, four slides left. Okay, so this is me. Uh, this is my uh, uh, exclusive implant center in Chennai. We, we go by uh, uh, brand called Implantry International Dental Care and Implantry Foundation of Advanced Industry. This is where we train doctors. We have life surgical workshops and uh, for basic advanced programs. And we are doctors from all over the world coming over for these programs. This is me on Insta. And welcome to follow me. And this is my uh, number. I'm available at any time to help you out with your cases. You can WhatsApp me. You can call me. If I miss a call, I'll surely call you after 10 and to see what's going on. You can mail me. Uh, via queries, doubts, case discussions. I'm always open. This is my setup. So anytime you guys come to Chennai, please drop by. Give me a call. Yeah, and this is uh, something that I'm really proud of. This is my exclusive implant operatory. It's a fully stainless steel, totally sterile, and uh, with relay facilities for, uh, we have trained a lot of doctors over there. Uh, and uh, this is something we're announcing in my last lecture. I think we are doing, uh, inspired by the virtual workshop by this team from Dentist Channel Online. We have saw, we're doing two uh, um, virtual workshops. One is basic and one is advanced. Just note down this WhatsApp number. Maybe you can, uh, I'll keep you posted. Those who are interested, just give me a message. We'll keep you posted about we're doing a two-day workshop on zygomatic implants virtual workshop and two-day workshop on basic implants i'll be announcing this in my next lecture on sunday 
we also have a cadaver workshop uh, usually we have it every year september but this time uh, i don't know but we'll be having it soon and we have dr do uh, coming over me nitin so we'll give you announcements about that and this is something something very special to me the tiktok protocols which i we have developed and uh, i'll be talking about this on my second session in sunday uh, sunday it's about i think 9 10 to 11 so late night session uh, we'll surely catch up on that and uh, i would like to conclude uh, by saying it has been a beautiful journey for me uh, not just doing the cases but then teaching uh, fellow dentists on the process so usually no one teaches even they teach they'll not show you live surgeries they'll just totally tell you these techniques and then this is how you do it and unless you actually see it over the shoulder uh, it, it will not help and that is uh, what has taken me to these uh, levels i am happy about i am my family is proud about my alumni is proud about this is when i was awarded the uh, by the governor for uh, teaching more than 200 dentists on these advanced uh, procedures in zygomatic and thyroid implants so uh, it has been a long and wonderful journey i'm sure i have a lot more to contribute to my profession lot more to learn myself we are looking forward to some more international collaboration which i'll be announcing soon and uh, looking forward to uh, meeting you all in my programs thank you uh, uh, ruben i am its time is exactly 10:45 thank you doctor i think uh, the first presentation its, itself was on time that shows how prepared you were how interested you are about this presentation and of course being a part of the virtual implant expo once again on behalf of the entire team at dentistchannel.online dr johnson i would genuinely like to thank you for always being there a well wisher a mentor a friend not only to dentists but of course to dentistchannel.online and the entire team at dentistchannel.online ladies and gentlemen that was dr johnson live on the very power packed first session now before we move to the question answer session there is a quick poll i would be running and i request you to kindly answer to the poll in the meanwhile i would like to request dr johnson to stop your screen share stop share All right ladies and gentlemen while you are answering to the poll i would like to tell you to please feel free to post all your questions in the q and a box which is there at the screen below please post your questions we are running a little short of time but would love to answer and would love to cover all of them so i would also request dr johnson to kindly keep the answers short so that we can cover all the questions thank you Once again, it's a sincere request for everyone who's uh, looking out for an exclusive offer by Norris Medical. Kindly, please uh, answer to the poll so that we can help you in getting the best offers from Norris Medical. Yes ladies and gentlemen I think your thank yous should not stop I would like to request each and every one of you who sincerely felt that the session the first session it were itself was such a power pack session I would request you to kindly post your good comments I'm sure they would be really appreciated by the entire team at dentistchannel.online as well as our dear speaker Dr Johnson James So if you liked the session if it was a wonderful session or oh, someone is saying Dr Johnson is the best certainly enough that might be true and yes definitely it is true when it comes to dr johnson being a friend a mentor and above all one of the best guides so thank you for answering to the poll we start with the first question from dr prem any absolute contraindications for zygoma pterygoid implants um Um, am I visible? Yes, doctor. You are audible as well as visible. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, come again. Uh, unless it is a surgical contraindication, I, I don't see any kind of uh, contraindication for zygomatic like, cardiac implants. Uh, Thank you, sir. So, we move to the next question. Question from Doctor Manoj. Sir, what should be the precautions one should need to take care during this type of implants? See, so you need to do good planning because uh, the angulation, the orientation of the drills are important. Going to, if you do more uh, vertical goes into the orbit, more uh, uh, slanted might go into implant fossa, and uh, the stability of implant also matters. So I, I just suggest a little bit of planning and orientation is enough. Nothing much to be worried about. Thank you, sir. Next question from Dr. Devendra Chopra. Do you use surgical guides in quad zygoma cases? Uh, 
I do, and that is exactly the, the the idea. The minimal invasive guided protocols for quadzygomas is something that we worked on, and it will help you a lot in uh, getting these cases done in a very short period of time. Next question from Dr. Shreyas: In case of totally pneumatized maxilla, can a pterygoid implant be placed in trans sinus? Yes, it can. You can do. You can do trans sinus approaches to pterygoid implants, and don't worry about uh, infections of the sinus and all. We can. Yes. The next question, wonderful question from Dr. Pratik Pal. He says that he's a prosto PG student. How can he start? <laughs> so start learning. I told you, learning is a continuous process. Read, read a lot. Do cases. Get the attitude in place, and uh, you start doing it immediately. Get trained first. Start doing the cases. That's only you can get the idea of what what to do and what not to do. Thank you, sir. Next question from Dr. Manav Modi. When and where is the Kedavar course? Yeah, we'll be announcing it shortly because of the lockdown periods. We're not doing it right now. Most probably in Jan, Feb. So you can put in your mail IDs. I'm sure Ruben will update you about when you do these programs. For all you lovely people who are looking out to be a part of the Cadaver course, please do get in touch with us, and we would love to give you all the information. Thank you. We move to the next question from Dr. Maria. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. I want to confirm: all on six is better, uh, or all on four? Uh, biomechanically, of course, all on six is uh, better, uh, provided you can give a good processes. Uh, the access is a little difficult, but then it will remove a lot of stress on the distal implant, the nasal implant. So, of course, uh, the AP spread is better, the occlusal spread is better, because all on six is better than all on six. Thank you, sir. Next question from Dr. Weena. What do you do when the pterygoid implant protrudes out of the zygoma? Um, a little confused over here. So the zygomatic implant will protrude out of the zygoma. Uh, one thread is fine. That's how it should be. Uh, we should not have two or three threads protruding outside. One thread is fine. Well, that is that is exactly what we mean by four-point contact. It has to protrude out of the zygoma so that it, it engages the outer cortex. That is when the implant is going to be successful. But if at any point of time, maybe after post-operative resorption, you have more threads exposed, there are procedures where we put a slit exposed and trim off the excess implant. But one thread is fine. Thank you. Friends, any more questions? If yes, please feel free to post them in the Q&A box. We have a question from Dr. Jay. How much time will it take to get the surgical splint? Uh, the planning is done within a day and the printing is done within a day. Two days max plus the courier, charges, uh, courier time. That's all. Wherever you are. One more question from Dr. Anand. What is the indication for polished collar implants? Should the placement be at the level of the crest? Uh, a beautiful uh, uh, question. We can do an entire uh, seminar on the polished collar implants. See, now a uh, lot of uh, science is coming up with one time, one abutments where we should not be disturbing the soft tissue collar around implants. Now, when we have a polished collar implant, we can keep the uh, hex at the level of soft tissue and the polished collar trans uh, going through the soft tissue. So what happens is you won't be removing the ceiling cap and uh, the, there will not be disturbation of the, the mycolock around the uh, polished collar. So ideally it can be kept at the level of soft tissue. Uh, the other way around it, okay, suppose it's extraction socket, you can keep it a little bit submerged also. So if at all there is a bone remodeling, little bit of implant is exposed, the polished collar will prevent any kind of pathogenic organisms accumulating onto the, uh, the plaque accumulation onto this polished collar. So, there are a lot of theories uh, behind this. It's a, a good question. And uh, but these are things which you, can, which you think about when going for polished collar implants. Especially pterygoids, we do it because there's a huge, uh, a big bunch of soft tissue over there. So a little bit of soft, uh, the implant exposed in soft tissue is not an issue. That's why we have pterygoid implants with five millimeter soft tissue collar. Whereas the tough pro comes with the two millimeter soft tissue collar, which I use a lot, a lot right now. Thank you, doctor. Last question before we wind the question and answer session. Once again, a question from Dr. Jay. How do you manage zygomatic implant failure? Uh, they should not fail because, uh, because we use zygoma implants as the last resort. So if your placement was right and if your BIC, the bone implant contact within the zygomatic implant was good enough of at least 12 to 13 millimeters, a stability quotient of maybe 45 to 60 newtons, these implants will not fail unless you go for very poor prosthetic planning and uh, uh, they will not fail. The, the implants will not fail. What you will face are complications with sinusitis or a, a soft tissue recession or plaque accumulation at the crest. Usually these implants do not fail. They stay there strong. And these uh, additional complications which, can, which you get can be managed separately than disturbing the implant.
Thank you, doctor. I think there's one last question and we would not want to miss it. So the question is from Dr. Devendra. What is the exact loading time for zygoma and pterygoid for a definitive prosthesis? Okay. Uh, the definitive process you mean by the final ceramic or zirconia processes. So uh, there's a concept called progress loading where the, after we place these implants, the zygomatic or pterygoid, we can immediately load them with a acrylic hybrid processes. That is done within a week's time. And uh, the patient is very comfortable with them. And you wait for a minimum of three months before you go for a definitive processes if the patient is uh, wearing a, a, a transitional process of hybrid denture. Three months is good, but then studies show even two months is okay. Uh, some docs leave it for a year also because they have a process, they can be comfortable with that. So I would, I would suggest three months is a good time to wait.